Jody Wilson-Raybould dropped an absolute bombshell today. That audio tape was fire. Everything in it was just better than expected in terms of giving us context into what happened and what didn't happen. Now, we knew a lot of this was coming. We knew that Jody Wilson-Raybould would be providing additional, additional documentation to us to help us better understand what had happened, um, to back up her testimony, to perhaps clear up some discrepancies between what she originally said and then what came after by the second testimony from Michael Wernick and from the testimony of Gerald Butts. But what we got was really something special, I think. I think we got a clear indication from Jody Wilson-Raybould that her position has been a consistent one. That she was, in this whole process, concerned with a few key things. And it really puts her in a credible and, I think, a positive light. She was concerned about, one, upholding the concept of law and order. You know, the rules that govern our society. You know, the procedures that ensure that, the, you know, the, the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecutions, their work is respected. And that companies aren't given special treatment. She also, I think, really tried to stand for this idea of, you know, protecting the Prime Minister. A lot of liberals have been saying, um, especially in social media, but, 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 but some also some liberal officials, some former liberal cabinet ministers like Sheila Copps, have been inferring that Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott, their only goal here is to embarrass and ultimately take down and usurp Justin Trudeau. But what we get here is, I think, a clear indication that Jody Wilson-Raybould was worried about the Prime Minister. She was worried that if he takes a stand here and interferes in the, you know, the, the prosecution process here, that it will hurt him. It will make him look like he's putting his political fortunes ahead of the law and order. And that fair or not, she was worried about that concern. So her overriding you know, values here were to, one, the rule of law, two, the protection of the Prime Minister, and I think three, doing what she felt was right, which of course ties into those previous two things. So I think, you know, it's also very clear that Michael Wernick is 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 not acting in a non-partisan manner here. He's clearly carrying water for the Prime Minister, and not the Prime Minister in his sense that he is the Prime Minister of Canada and therefore everyone's Prime Minister, but sort of hinting that, you know, Jody Wilson-Rabel needs to put aside the legal questions and talk about her role as a cabinet minister, which is to say, to take this politically, which is to say, access this as somebody who's trying to get herself in a government re-elected. And that's not Michael Wernick's job. Michael Wernick is not a partisan employee. Unlike Gerald Butts, you can say whatever you want about him, his role is partisan. Michael Wernick's role was nonpartisan, and yet we clearly see him here acting in a deeply, deeply partisan manner, working for the Prime Minister as a political mechanism and not merely as a, a mechanism through the civil service. I think it's also clear here that the pressure that Jody Wilson-Raybould talked about is very evident. Some of the text messages that were shown uh, during this recent opening have demonstrated that, you know, in various discussions between Jody Wilson-Raybould or her staff, that this idea of interference was very clearly on her mind. I don't think you can deny it. So where does that leave us? Where does this leave us? I think it leaves us in a couple key places. One, I think most Canadians believe Jody Wilson-Raybould before, and I think her credibility has only increased with this video and with the, uh, you know, the corresponding textual evidence. I think that, frankly, it weakens the credibility of key people on Trudeau's side of this affair, namely Michael Wernick. And I think that this really raises the, the credibility of a call for a public inquiry. Now, you know, Andrew Scheer jumped the gun, you know, sort of grandstanded and said, you know, Justin Trudeau, you must resign over this. And, and he, you know, made this big stand. Whereas I think Jagmeet Singh from the very beginning here, I think has taken the reasonable course of action and it's only been proven to be increasingly reasonable with each passing day, which is we need a national inquiry into this scandal. The Justice Committee and its partisan mentality does not let us get to the truth. You know, neither does the partisan mentality of the Ethics Committee. It's just a reality. We need a nonpartisan process to investigate this and to have key figures testify in front of that nonpartisan process, preferably under oath, I would feel, and not just Jody Wilson-Raybould, 
but people like Michael Wernick, people like Gerald Butts, people like Katie Telford, and even people like Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Look, the reality here is that this is a this is a this is a bombshell. Nothing necessarily is something so new that it destroys everything else before it. But the 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 effect of this audio recording can't be understated. Can't be overstated, excuse me. It just can't. Because the passion with which Raybold speaks, the confidence with which she speaks, the 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 consistent concern she has not for herself, but for the prime minister and for the rule of law in this country, how Canada will be seen by countries around the world if it interferes in this case as, you know, perhaps the Prime Minister seemed to, seemed to want. And so I think that now the pressure is increasingly on Justin Trudeau. And I'll tell you what, this puts a lot of pressure on the Liberal MPs, including in the, in the backbench. You know, there's a rumor going around that next week the Liberals wanted to make a process to boot Wilson-Raybould and to boot Philpott from Cabinet. But I think, frankly, with this testimony, Wilson Raybould has demonstrated that while she hasn't, well, you know, she's left cabinet, while she has concerns, I think she's remained, you know, loyal to the ideals that Justin Trudeau supposedly holds. And I think for them to kick her out now will look even worse than if they did it before. That's where we are. Justin Trudeau's in real trouble, folks. Justin Trudeau's in real trouble. I don't think Andrew Shear's the alternative. Because I think, frankly, the conservatives would have done much the same. But I think increasingly, it's time to start looking to Jagmeet Singh, who is a new opportunity for bold, progressive leadership in this country. So let's see what happens. It's going to be an exciting few months.